my name is Bailey Martins, and today we will be interviewing a special someone, Senior Schaefer Rose. So, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, so, what is your motivation for participating in this interview? Um, I think that different stories need to be heard. I agree. <laughs> what obstacle did you overcome in your life that you will be sharing? Being a uh, minority woman in a predominantly um, male fields of work. What, if anything, would you have done differently in your life? Probably would have gotten more education. Oh. Yeah, I've gone on for master's degrees. Well, what do you study? Uh, I studied um, graphic design and marketing. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, so you're an artist? Yes, now I am an artist. I'm no longer um, doing graphic design work, I'm pursuing an art of, uh, pursuing my interests in fine art. That's really cool. Um, so, what do you look forward to now? I look forward to giving back to my community through different, uh, different projects that I work on. Uh, for instance, um, uh, for the Hispanic Heritage Month, oh. I did two large 25 foot banners for the Friendship Park downtown. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. I feel like I saw that once. They looked really cool. Yeah, when you drive by. And then um, I try to paint the Haven every winter for Christmas, the Haven of, the Haven uh, shelter oh. across from the court building. Um, I get other volunteers, other artists to volunteer and do that. And then we're also working on a project to put banners in that building in their new addition because a space doesn't look like home until you have artwork on the walls. So. Yeah, you know what, you're right. You overcome in your life that you will be sharing with us. One specific obstacle uh, would be fitting in in workplaces that are predominantly, you know, there are no women <laughs> and there are no uh, women of color in the whole place. Oh. I, that's some, it was an obstacle, it was just uh, something I had to deal with. Mm -hmm. So, is so. Tell me about what it feels like to be a refugee. Like, do you feel like you're treated any differently in America? Well, um, as a, how can I say? I, I I am born of a mother that immigrated, and when she immigrated, she was a uh, she became a legal citizen. So. Um, but she, as a woman of color, um, but being a very, you know, astute and intelligent woman, um, she was able to overcome a lot of uh, obstacles. She, she never let anything stand in her way either. Is she like your biggest inspiration? Yeah, she is. My mother's 103 years old. Oh my goodness. Yeah, her name, uh, we all look good for our age. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, 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 she, you know, has her master's degree. She had businesses and everything before she had kids, and she's kind of like my uh, model. You know, I think that's, you know, that's what I want to be. And she was able to overcome a lot because of her education. Um, she knew how to, you know, problem solve situations and make the best of things and make contacts. Mm -hmm. so. so sweet. Yeah. So you were born in America? Yes, I was born in Battle Creek. Do you have a philosophy at life? Like, what's the best piece of advice for living a good life, would you say? Uh, to be happy and not to take anything too serious. Yeah. So that's kind of my mom's philosophy, and I agree with her. Now that I'm <laughs> a grandma, too. But um, I think that that's a very solid philosophy if, and being true to yourself. So do you have, like, any family in Venezuela that you visit? I have family in Panama. Um, the Republic of Panama, where the canal is, and uh, yeah, I have a huge family there, and I do visit every few years. Do you celebrate like their holidays and stuff like that? Do you they just celebrated on November 3rd, the uh, Independence Day of Panama, Tres de Noviembre, oh. and uh, I have a grand nephew who is down there right now too. So, feeling that you don't feel as though the society is diverse enough, um, when times are tough, what keeps you going? Um, I, my faith in God, my faith 
has always been a you know my my go to <laughs> stronghold, um, and also looking beyond the problem. So if there's a problem, you know you you look at your problem and then you see beyond it. So you don't let that be the wall that just stops you. So you always have that far sighted vision of the future. Oh, it's very optimistic. <laughs> uh, so what are your hobbies slash special interests? Have they changed since you've, um, I don't know, you've been here? Well, um, my hobbies, well, I started uh, doing more volunteer work for the community and specifically for like uh, my minority group, which are the Hispanics and Latinos. And that's changed. That's what I'm starting to focus more on that. Um, I used to focus on the homeless population. Oh. I still do, but I'd like to include the Latino and Hispanic community. I think that a lot of times um, bilingual kids, uh, uh, how can I say, because I, I was raised, bi I'm bilingual also, but you need to find that camaraderie with other people that, you know, share uh, similarities to you. What exactly is bilingual? That means you speak two languages. Oh. So I speak Spanish and English, and I read Spanish and English too. Oh, and can, that's cool. And uh, it's, um, my dad spoke five languages. So, you know, he was good at languages, and I speak a little bit of Farsi too, so. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah. What's the one thing you've always wanted but still don't have, would you say? Well, let's see. To spiritually, to be able to always be calm and secure about everything. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think that's a, a spirit, diff people arrive to that in different ways, and, uh, but I think that that's very important. Yeah, I agree with that totally. So, describe a person or situation from your childhood that had a profound effect on the way you looked at life. Because um, I know you said your mom. Yeah, my mom was a profound interest. She, she would, instead of spanking me, she would say, okay, I need to talk to you at seven o'clock in my room. And it was like, can I just get a spanking? <laughs> <laughs> and she says, no, you're old enough to no reason. And she talked to me for two, three hours on something I did. It was like awful, but you know, <laughs> it was the best thing because it made me realize ramifications of my actions or my inaction and how it not only affected family, it would affect my community. If, you know, it was like the butterfly effect. <laughs> so she would put it in that perspective. Um, do you have any siblings? Yes, I have, uh, there's five children. I have three brothers and a sister. Oh, wow. Big family. Mm -hmm. uh, what kinds of things bring you the most pleasure now? Because you, you like volunteer and like, you know, you do art and stuff, but is there anything else that you would say that interests you? Um, how can I, I like, uh, Talking to old people, or old, <laughs> old, I mean, I'm considered senior, but um, the like when I visit my mom, I enjoy talking to the other residents, and uh, I have older art friends too that I help out, some, and it's just nice to connect to um, people that from another generation. Yeah, because they have a lot of cool stories to tell. Yeah, that, so. yeah. Um, how has your dreams and goals changed through your, through your life? Well, I think when you're young, you just want to be, you know, okay, I want to go to school, get my degree, make big bucks, and but you know the but the real important thing I think is family, mm -hmm. because family never goes away. I mean, they're with you through the thick and thin, and uh, they're you know usually your best. Uh, audience, <laughs> or you know, they, they support you in many ways. Have you always wanted to be an artist? Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? And um, I didn't have like, uh, I just did a big painting of Frida Kahlo. Um, it was displayed in the art center. And I, 
I was making something for the Hispanic Heritage Month, and I portrayed her because the most of the uh, Latinos are Mexican. And then I portrayed other racial people that are Hispanic, but are of um, you know different uh, different descents, but they're still considered Hispanic. Have you ever thought about painting a mural, like on a building? Oh, outside, that's pretty rough, but I have painted the mural at the Cool Family Community Center. And I used to have a window painting business, and I painted glass on the inside. I could paint your windows here. <laughs> but it's, it's just, um, yeah, the, and I've met many of the artists that paint outside. Well, that's cool. Mm -hmm. How would you say your culture is different from like the American culture? Panamanians are very happy people. Yeah. They are. They kind of don't, they don't, um, how can I say, nothing is sacred and that they can make jokes about everything. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it relieves a lot of their stress and they're, they're a lot happier too. I mean, granted, they have, you know, the same uh, problems that everyone does. And they're also, Panamanians are very hard workers and people just, uh, they they work. I mean, if you don't if you don't have a degree in or you don't have um, formal education, you can start your own business. Just uh, Panamanians, I've never seen like you know. There's not a lot of unemployed. You're unemployed because you're you're sick or something like that. But most people are working. Yeah, so they're hard workers. Hard workers, yeah. yeah I believe it. Um, what would you say is the best and worst thing about America? Uh, the best thing about America is that there's opportunity for everyone. If, if you're in the right place <laughs> in the right time, um, there's a, a, you know, people can come here. So there's so many immigrant stories of people coming to the U.S. and with nothing, and then, you know, they become educated or they start businesses. That's the good thing about the U.S. You can take risks and get ahead. And then the the, I would say the negative thing about the U.S. is that um, uh, where people think they're better than others. Um, sometimes that's really, uh, uh, that's everywhere in the world. There's different uh, ways of saying they're better than someone else. It may be, you know, money, uh, social position, um, you know, education, and where they live, uh, their race, um, but that's the, the bad thing about America. There is some that, um, it's not just racism, but it's also against people like their socioeconomic. They look down on people because, you know, you don't have a good job, you know, you don't have an education, but those people are still valid. So that's... That's the one thing about America that I see that would be nice to improve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So you said that you had veterans in this? My, um, my father's a World War II veteran. My, um, uh, my great grandfather was a uh, Civil War veteran too. And um, I have uncles that were in, I have an uncle that was in World War I and II and my brother was in Vietnam, and my husband uh, served in Vietnam also for three tours, and he retired from the Air Force. Wow, so you got a large family history. That's impressive. Um, so what do you look forward to now? Um, I look forward to doing more art and learning more, dif more uh, about art, and I paint with watercolor oil and acrylic and I've just started um, uh, taking ceramic classes uh, and I'd like to show my artwork more. I show my work is hung right now at Commerce Point oh. so if you want to see it it's, it's there with uh, another artist Avna and uh, just expanding that getting representation in the gallery. Um. Where did you go to high school? I went to St. Philip went there for 12 years. Yeah, my mom went there too. Oh, what was her name? Jackie Martins. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. I was probably older. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought of uh, joining Art Prize? Yes, yes. Um, 
I just I have a friend that just joined it too. She's a 92 year old artist. <laughs> so um, yeah, art prize is good, but art prize is kind of a it's a different kind of competition. It's not your regular art competition because usually they have a uh, it's it's different, but it's a great it's a great uh, competition. What are you thinking about doing for art prize? Um, with Art Prize, your work has to be pretty much larger scale because my portraits that I do of people are maybe four feet, three by four feet. Mm -hmm. So that's not really big enough for Art Prize, so maybe something bigger. Yeah, I mean, maybe just a giant portrait. Yeah, a giant portrait or something. <laughs> but oh, do you have any pets? Yes, I have an adopted uh, Pomsky, oh. and she's really cute. She's eight years old, and then I just adopted an uh, eight-year-old cockatiel. Because when I was a kid, we had a parrot from Panama. Really? Yeah, and it was like a, uh, like a dog, you know. It was really alert. It would tell us when someone's coming up the uh, walkway. So anyway, I adopted this from a friend of mine that works in rescues. That's so cool. I've never known anyone who had a pet fa parrot. <laughs> But um, how old was your mom when she immigrated to the U.S.? She was 33, I think. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. How'd she get here? Uh, she got here by steamboat from Panama. Uh, she went to Costa Rica and then took a steamboat to Miami. How long did that take? Uh, a while, because she had to wait till the ship came in because uh, the, there was a storm or something. It was delayed. And then I think it took several days to get across. And then once she was in Miami, she took a train uh, to the um, uh, Fort Knox, Kentucky. That's where my dad was stationed. That sounds really hard. So did she come to the U.S. for your father? Yes. She, they were married in Panama, and then she came here to join him. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so they met in Panama? Yes. yes. Do you have a husband? Yes, uh, Herb Schaefer. He's retired Air Force and retired from the Federal Center. Do you have any kids? I have uh, three daughters, uh, my, my two. Um, one lives in New Jersey and one lives in LA, and then his daughter lives in Battle Creek. Wow, so um, what do they do in New Jersey and LA? Uh, the one in, in uh, New Jersey, she just moved from Manhattan. She was a neurophysiologist, and now she's a mom. She just had a baby. And the one in L.A., she's an actress. Oh, really? Natasha F. Com. She's a, That's her website. But she's um, working in writing and climbing that ladder. <laughs> you have such an interesting family. Like, that's so cool. Um, so ha is anyone else in your family an artist? Like, did you develop that from anybody else? There's three of us, my brother Charles and my sister Tanya. Who lives in Canada now? They they are art they they were artistic and they um, did artwork as, in their youth, but then they ha you know sporadically doing artwork. But I've kind of jumped in with two feet. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you say it's hard kind of being the life of an artist, like coming up with ideas? Or it's being creative. Yeah, because you have to have a lot of things in balance so you can create. But it's. It's uh, after a while it becomes a necessary part of your happiness to yeah. create. How long um, have you been an artist, like professionally? Um, I would say I started um, professionally. Well, I, as a graphic designer, that's a type of artist. So I would draw and do line drawings and that for you know brochures or whatever a client needed. Um, and then I became advertising artist when I first moved back to Battle Creek after being gone 25 years. Where did you go? I lived in Belleville, oh. just on the other side of the state. So <clears throat> um, so I, what was the question? I'm sorry, I just did <laughs> um, I just asked if it was like hard being the life of an artist. Yeah, it's hard in terms of getting your work sold and shown. That's a constant work. Like I have work in the art center, and uh, I I participate in shows, but um, in this area of Michigan, there aren't a lot of galleries, 
and uh, it's it's a challenge to you know get your work in places like I ex I have my work up north at a at a coffee shop and that's next to a gallery so it gets some traffic so how come you moved out of Battle Creek to uh, Belleville, yeah, Belleville. Toward, the, toward Detroit. Um, well, my, my husband got a job with Detroit Edison. Oh. And then that's where I started my window painting business. Oh, that's cool. How long did you do the window painting business? I did it for 13 years. Oh, wow. So I did corporate and um, uh, storefront, or chains too. So you'd say you've lived a pretty adventurous life? Yeah, I have more to, more to live for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So There's you don't you don't think that you think you live life to your fullest? I'm a, I think so. I think I tried. I think I had to. I had a um, how can I say like an episode of depression, but it was. A, I think that kind of refocused me onto what is important in life. Yeah. How did you overcome that? Um, I sought out professional help, and I also. Um, that helped, and, and within, you know, it took about a year and a half, and then I was back on my feet again. Oh, that's so amazing. It can be dealt with. I mean, I think that everyone should deal with problems that come up and get professional help because, you know, there's so many people that don't, and their life stops. Mm -hmm. What would you like to tell the people who suffer with depression like you do? Is there anything you'd like to give advice on to them? Yeah, I think uh, professional help okay. is good. And having a, and noticing when you feel like off or something to see like, what's really going on here? Is it, you know, where your stress is coming from or what's going on? And, and deal with the issues that you need to deal with. So um, would you say the life of being a, a refugee is than a normal life. I mean, I guess you're not really like a refugee. But like no, but I've known a lot of people that are. Yeah. I've known a lot of people that are Mideastern re refugees. Um, when I lived in Belleville area, I've known a lot of uh, Hispanic people that are coming in to the U.S. in Battle Creek too. And I think that their biggest thing is that they don't have the regular support that most people do. For instance, we all know people we can, we know who to go to for help, but refugees don't know that, know how, you know, where to get help. Um, my mom worked a lot with the uh, migrant workers in the western part of the states and she started clothing drives with uh, the different parishes in Battle Creek for the migrant workers so that they would have clothes and then it evolved into getting medical care for them. And oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> your mom sounds like an amazing person. Yeah, like, she is. <laughs> your childhood was like? I had a good childhood and uh, it was a uh, being the youngest, and I had a lot of time to learn how to keep myself busy, and that's why I think I I got into art and drawing. Oh, yeah. But you were talking about refugees in Venezuela. Um, I heard that uh, I I had an old college roommate that lived in that's from Venezuela. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't contacted her, but I have kind of keep track of what's going on there. In Venezuela, they said the average citizen has lost like over 20 pounds because of the lack of food. I've heard there's like a, a midlife crisis or something happening in Venezuela, like there's a crisis. There's no food. I mean, their stores are empty, kind of like Cuba. There's people who are kind of, people are on their own to get food. They're, they're um, suffering because they don't have the the structure of, you know, how we have food coming into our grocery stores. It's, it's quite a chain of, uh, that supports that, and th they don't have that, so. How do you think America could help them? I think there's a lot of work America could do in South and Central America. Um, I think by having maybe advisors go down there, um, it's a double-edged sword. If you get into a country too much, you don't let them grow like they should. But if you don't do anything, it's going to end up like, you know, like the Guatemala and Honduras and all the people walking out of their country coming to the U.S. because in their country they're subject to um, 
being killed by the drug lords if they don't work for them. Their kids aren't allowed to walk the road to school unless they pay a drug dealer, you know, passage to the school. Oh and the kids, the parents um, are told, you're, you know, your kids have to work for the, you know, in the fields, the cocaine fields. And if they don't, uh, they'll kidnap them anyway. And they work out there until they die. I mean, there's no school when they're working in the fields. They work them long hours. They, it's, it's just hideous. And it's, it's as if, the, you know, no one's paying attention why they're leaving. They need to s try to help solve the countries to solve those problems. Thank you for bringing awareness to that. I, I, yeah, I haven't heard much about that until recently. Yeah, they don't, uh, <clears throat> people don't have you know, the opportunity to get their children educated in those countries. They are at risk of being killed um, and held hostage, you know, just being taken from their families. So that's why the mothers are carrying their kids up here, because they, they feel like they're going to lose them, they're going to be dead in, the, in their country. So it's, it'd be nice if we could look at why and try to help them. Mm -hmm. I had no idea it was that bad. Oh, yeah, that's why they're coming. It's not because they want a free lunch. It's because they, they're trying to save their kids from uh, becoming slaves to the drug lords. So what is your you know, like point of view on immigration? I think immigration does have to be controlled. Mm -hmm. And I think that people do have to apply. Um, I think the holding, we have to figure out how to do it, not just hire companies to do it. Um, because right now, uh, the kids that are being held, some of them are lucky. They're going into foster homes, but others are, are being kept in like children prisons. Oh, wow. And they're, you know, they are learning, they, they are offered education to a point, but in a prison type setting. Uh, yeah, it has to be solved. They have to talk to, communicate with the countries the people are coming from and figure something out because, you know, we can't house everybody. You know, we can't pay for everyone's welfare forever. So, and uh, yeah, so they have to really be wise on how they deal with this so situation. You in, like legal immigration. Yeah, legal immigration is 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 good. And but the thing is, is that we've lived without with having the illegal immigration. California growers suffered because of the uh, block the, at the border. Their workers weren't able to immigrate and harvest the grapes. I mean, grapes rotted on the vines and stuff because there were no workers to harvest. And other uh, food industries suffered too. Yeah, and I'm sure they're willing to take any job that they can. Yeah, well, they come seasonally. They come like um, the migrant workers, you know, like migratory birds. They fly south and come back up. These workers, they come north, they help harvest crops, and then they go back. A lot now, some stay in those, but the ones that come up seasonally, I think that should be allowed. So besides your um, college friend, do you know any other people from Venezuela? Um, right, uh, yes, but I don't know their experience. But what people do you know? Through VOSIS, there's people from all different um, countries in South America. What exactly is VOSIS? VOSIS is like a Hispanic community center in Battle Creek. Mm -hmm. It helps connect people to services. There are a lot of um, immigrants from Central and South America, but mostly Mexico. 80% of the immigrant population is Mexican because they're our neighbor next door. <laughs> How did your mom figure out what to do after she moved to America? Um, when she first moved to America, she was, um, uh, she had family here on my dad's side that helped her, you know, uh, learn the ropes or, you know, find out where things are. And then uh, uh, they, she was older and ready to start a family. But then she connected to, through, through the church, she connected to other Hispanics. 
and she was able to help start a rosary group that's been going on for 50 years and she was able to start helping the migrant workers through her work through the church. That's cool. So, um, so <laughs> uh, what did you mean by when you said you wish you would have gotten a better education? I don't think we like really evaluated on that. Well, I think that um, uh, how can I say? When I was going to school or applying for colleges, I was applying for, you know, like the best art schools in the country, and I wish I would have gotten into one. But I got into a, a good school. Western's uh, graphic design department is um, uh, an accredited uh, art department. There's only three in Michigan. So, so I mean, that was good. I, I did get a good solid education, but I was hoping to go to New York or something, go to Pratt Institute or, you know, different schools. Well, you know, it's still an honor to go, to be able to go to the, like one of those graphic schools because I think that's still pretty cool. Yeah. It's um, so is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? Um, I wish you guys all the best of luck and the uh, success after high school and in high school, enjoy it while you can. Is there anything you'd like to say to people in high school, like how they should spend their lives? I think um, meet people from other cultures that are different than you. It's always interesting. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how how you are the same and how you, you're also different, but you're also more similar than different. I'm having some trouble Oops. With the <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. Okay, well, it was like a really big pleasure meeting you. Yes. So thank you for coming again. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>